of a lim or systems by elimination. <laughs> okay, welcome to this episode on solving systems by elimination. So if you saw solving systems by graphing and you saw solving systems by substitution, this is similar. It's the third method of solving systems of equations. Some of these examples will be the same examples from those two videos, but with this method. And then some of them will be brand new. Okay, um, so let's go. Solving systems by elimination. Ah! <laughs> I'm going crazy because I, I've been recording just a bunch of stuff over and over and over again. Anyway, so how to solve a system of equations by elimination. Choose a variable. Multiply the equations. Sometimes it's just one equation. Sometimes it's both equations. Number three, get opposites. Opposites are negative two and positive two. Opposites are not negative one and positive three. They have to be the same number, one negative, one positive. Anyway, um, number four, add down and solve. And then number five, plug in that one answer and find the second answer because you need an X and a Y, a Y and an X because your answer has to be an ordered pair. Okay, best if equations are in standard form. Standard form is AX plus BY equals C. Let go. All right, example number one. I have the answer already. I always give my kids the answers because I'm concerned with your process. Do you understand the process? Because photo map can find an answer. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox this time around. First thing that you do is you need to pick a variable. Am I going to use the X's or am I going to use the Y's? In this example, example number one out of six, I'm going to choose the Y's because the coefficients of the Y's are already opposites. One is a positive, one is a negative. They did the work for me. Won't he do it? So we're going to go with y's in this case, okay? If I'm adding the equations down, so top plus bottom, okay, what's going to happen is the y's are going to go ahead and simplify out, right? They drop out because one is positive, one is negative. Get out of here, all right? So I'm going to add down. So that means I'm going to add purple x plus pink x, and that's going to give me 2x, and I'm going to add 8 minus 4, and that's going to give me positive 4. So now in this new equation that I have with no y variable in it, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to divide by 2. x equals dos. I have half my answer. Does it match our graph? It sure does. Um, so then I'm going to draw this little line here. Take the equation, um, and I'm going to plug in the 2. So the purple equation it doesn't matter which equation I use. I can use the purple one or the pink one. I use the purple one, and instead of x, I put a two in there. I gotta get y by itself, because that's the second part of my answer. I divide by two, y equals three, ta-da! Uh, does that match what we had already got? Yes, it is. Okay, anyway, I'm being extra. Uh, example number two. <laughs> we need to choose a variable. Am I gonna use the x's, and am I gonna use the y's. So in this case, it's just as easy to use the x's as it is to use the y's because they don't match. In that last equation, the variables, the coefficients matched and they were already opposites. But in this equation, I got a 2 and a 1. And then I have a 1 and a 4. What am I supposed to do with that? So just choose any one. Choose. So we're going to go with x, right? What number? So this is the tricky part of elimination. What number would I have to multiply this the pink equation by to make it, the opposite of positive 2 because I can get that X to be any number I want to I just got to choose the right number to multiply it by so obviously there's a 1 in front of the X right if I multiply that 1 by a negative 2 then I will have opposites I will have a positive 2 in the purple and the pink equation will turn into a negative 2 but remember when you're multiplying equations you have if you do it you got to keep the whole thing balanced so I have to multiply the X by negative 2 the 4y by negative 2 and that 12 by negative 2 okay so we're gonna rewrite our system the purple equation stayed the same so it's just right there and the pink equation is gonna be negative 2x minus 8y equals negative 24 yo miss B you just did a lot like what happened okay so my students listen tell me the tricky part about elimination is just getting the variables to match. I just need to get them opposites. So I had a positive two. In that bottom equation, the coefficient of the x was one. I can multiply one by any number in the world 
to get a matching number. So the matching number I needed to get was a negative two. So I multiplied everything in that bottom equation by a negative two. So now that I have opposites, I can do it just like I did the last problem, right? Because what's gonna happen is those opposites, bye, and I'm going to add down negative seven y equals negative 28. I'm gonna divide by negative seven y equals four. Does that match? Yes, the y is four. So swoop, I'm gonna plug it in to the purple equation. But Ms. Bernard, you use the purple equation on the other side. doesn't matter when you already have half your answer, you have the x or the y, you can choose purple or pink. So here we go, baby. Divide by two, x equals negative four. Does that match? Yes, the x does equal negative four. The y does equal positive four. That matches my graph. I eliminated, look at you. Negative four comma four is my answer. Okay, example number three out of six. I know the answer already. Oh my gosh, it's negative one comma negative two. But do you know how to get it by elimination? <sighs> okay, oh, too quick. I'm gonna leave that there, but I'm gonna explain my thought process here for a second, right? So we need to choose a variable, the x's or the y's. Well, I'm looking at the x's. I have a two and a negative four. I could multiply everything in the top equation by positive two and then it would change the, the coefficient on the x to positive four, which would be the opposite of negative four. That is a good option. Um, or I could look at my y's, and I have a positive y and a negative y. I could multiply the bottom, which is what we're about to do, spoiler alert, um, by negative one, because then my top y would be a positive one, and my bottom y would be a negative one. And those would still be opposites. So let's rewrite our, our system the purple equation stayed the same. The pink equation I changed, okay? So now I have a positive Y and a negative Y. Are those opposites? They sure are. We love to see it, okay? So we're going to go ahead and get those out of here. I'm going to add down. 2 plus 4 is 6 equals negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. <laughs> we're going to divide. X equals negative 1. Does that match what we had on the graph? Sure does. Look at me on the right path, hair flip. Okay. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to plug it into the purple equation. So X equals negative one. So instead of X, I'm going to plug in a negative one. So you can see that in the orange there. Two times negative one is negative two. I got to get Y by itself. So I'm going to add two to both sides. Y equals negative two. Does that match our graph? Sure does. Look at me doing the dang thing. Okay, so then we're going to do example number four. Um, I'm not going to give you a graph this time. No answer for you. Let's just see if we can get this, because this, this equation is actually not the same from um, the last two videos that I did, so that's why there's no graph. But I'm going to show you the graph, and I'm going to show you the, we're going to use the calculator just to check our answer. So, Because uh, you always want to check your answer if you can, know that you're on the right path. So this equation is, this is level 1,000. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> All I know is, is if I'm trying to pick a variable, I'm looking at my X's, I have a three and a five. Ain't nothing I can multiply three to make a five, and nothing I can multiply five to make a three, and then I got negative two and five for the, for the Y's, and it's just a mess. Like, what am I supposed to do here? So this is where you multiply both equations. At this point, it doesn't matter. One is not gonna be easier than the other because both of the X's are positive, both of the Y's are negative. So it's like, just pick one and you, it's just going to be difficult either way, okay? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to multiply the pink equation by negative three. Why negative three? Because it's going to give me a negative 15. And then I'm going to multiply the top equation by positive five. Why five? Because it's going to give me a positive 15. So if I have a positive 15 and a negative 15, am I going to have my opposites? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay? So I'm gonna have 15x minus 10y equals 10 for the purple equation, and the pink equation, negative 15x plus 15y equals negative 30. Do you see your opposites? Yes, we love it. So we're gonna go ahead and get those out of here, and we're gonna add down. So negative 10 plus 15 is gonna give me 5y 
equals negative 20. And then I'm gonna divide by five. Y equals negative four. So that's half my answer. So now what do I do with that Y equals negative four? Well, I go ahead and I plug it in. Does it matter which equation we plug it into? No, we could use the purple or the pink, but I'm just in a habit of using the purple, so here we go. So negative four goes in for the Y value, not the X, okay? And I'm gonna get three X plus eight, because the negative times the negative is a positive. And I'm gonna get X by itself x equals negative 2. Boop! Those are my answers. So just because you found the y first doesn't mean the y goes first in the answer because we all know ordered pairs are x comma y like ABC order. X comes before Y. I have to say these things all the time to my students. <laughs> so how do you check your answer? Because we don't have the graph. So like how do I know I did it right? I'm so glad you asked. Okay, so let's go, say you go into your calculator, right? You'll put the first equation in, and instead of x, you would use negative 2, and instead of y, you will use negative 4, okay? And you'll put it straight into, if it's a scientific calculator, it'll do PEMDAS for you, order of operations, and you'll press, when you press equal to, you should get the other side of the equation, so it says equal to 2. That means, good, it works for the first one, but we have to make sure it works for both equations, because we want to know where both lines touch, right? So 5 times parentheses negative 2 minus 5 times parentheses negative 4, Okay, I'm gonna press equal and see if it equals the 10 that's on the other side of the equation. And voila, it totally does equal that. We love it. Okay, um, so then we have example number five out of six. So two more. So you know, if you if you were with me on the last two videos, you know the last two examples are usually what the no solution and the infinitely many solutions. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, so I have these two equations, and what I know. What do you got going on here? Uh huh. Oh, the bottom equation was not in standard form. Remember that we, it's best to do elimination when it's in standard form. So I just, I'm gonna go ahead and swap the x and the six. So it was a negative x, now it's positive, a negative six, now it's positive on the other side. So we just got that in standard form. Um, I'm looking at my variables now. Which one am I gonna choose, x's or y's? Honestly, you could choose either of those and it would be fine. Um, I'm going to choose the x's and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. And then I'm going to get this. And once I get this, um, I have my opposites. But look, I have two pairs of opposites now. Oof. The x's and the two y's were opposites. So what am I left with? 0 cannot equal 14. Is that? That's not, I can't, what? What does that even mean? It means no solution, people. Okay, so that's how you recognize it while you're doing elimination. No solution. Uh -huh. So you had two matching equations on the left, x minus 2y, x minus 2y, but they equal different things. Negative 8 and then 6. Anytime that happens, you don't even have to do the work. You should know that it's no solution. We discussed this in the last video. Anyway. Um, so let's look at this example. So I'm looking at my X's and my Y's. Which one am I going to choose? Again, I could choose the X's or the Y's. In this case, I'm going to choose the, the X's. And I'm going to multiply the top equation by what to make that a positive 6X. What number? This is what you got to think in your head. What number do I need to multiply that top equation by to get that 2 to be a positive 6? Oh, good. Look at you, you're so smart. Times three, and if I do it to one thing in the equation, gotta do it to all the things, because we gotta keep that thing balanced, okay? Look what's happening, I got opposites on both sides again. But zero this time equals zero, because the negative three and the positive three are also zero. So when it's a true statement, it's infinitely many solutions. True statements, infinitely many solutions. Nutshell, in a nutshell people okay that is solving by elimination what am i gonna tell you to do i'm gonna tell you to do the same thing i always say at the end of my videos get a sheet of paper go back through the video see if you can figure out the problems without watching me do it first to see if you really 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 get the information and if not i will see 
you in the next one. Later!